Hi, this is Nicole Hetty from Paper Tray Inc. And today I am going to talk to you about our new bulk mail envelope die. I'm really excited about this design. Um, if you look at it, it looks a little bit different than some of our other dies. Um, we've got the regular die line around the outside edge here. And then you'll see these little grooves cut from the backer of the die that go all the way through. Now these grooves don't necessarily cut your paper or anything like that. What they do is they make a slight um, marking on your paper of where you should score. Now in some cases if you're using a lighter weight paper right after you die cut you can leave the paper in the die and then run your bone folder or your um, stylus right through the back of the openings onto your cardstock. However, for this particular die, because it's such long, straight scores um, that really kind of require precision, um, I recommend just using the reference marks that these um, little grooves make and follow up with your favorite scoreboard or score tool. So I've gone ahead and um, I have die cut um, the two halves that you need to create one envelope from Classic Craft cardstock. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that I specifically designed this so that you can cu cut two of these from one sheet of cardstock. So what you're going to want to do is cut your 8.5 by 11 sheet in, in half to give you two 5.5 uh, by 8.5 pieces and they will fit perfectly on here and you'll be able to get one envelope out of one piece of cardstock. That just helps a lot with um, preserving your paper a little bit a little bit more, conserving your paper rather. So I've die cut both of these and you'll notice I've stamped this with polka dots already. I did that before I die cut. Um, so remember if you want to add any patterns or anything to your cardstock before you turn into an envelope, do your stamping first and then do your cutting. Now I'm going to show you how um, I found the best way to score this. Now I don't know if this is going to show up on camera or not, but the um, there are little reference marks on here made by those grooves like I talked about earlier. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just place those right on my scoreboard and line up those lines. And I'm going to just go ahead and go right along those reference marks like this. And I want to get a nice deep crease. I'm going to turn it and do the same thing over here. And again, I'm, it's probably not going to show up on camera all that well, but I'm using the little reference line, the little indentation that the grooves in the die made. And I'm going to do this side here. And then I'm going to follow up with this second line here up at the top. And the last one I'm going to do is this one over here. So now everything is properly scored. I'm going to go ahead and do my initial folding. And of course, I want the pattern to show on the outside of the envelope. So I'm going to do my folding from the back. And I'll show you a little trick here. When you're getting ready to start to fold up one of these long edges, because they're so narrow, what you want to do is kind of take your fingers to lift it up a little bit first, like that. You see how I lifted that up just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is take my bone folder and I'm just going to go ahead and fold over a large section at a time like that. And that kind of keeps it from getting wrinkled. Um, and, you know, instead of sitting here with the bone folder and doing just a little bit at a time, it come, I found that it comes out much more crisp if I do it that way. 
So I'm going to move on to my other side. I'm going to do the same step I did on the other. And just kind of fold it up a little bit to start. And then use the bone folder and flip the whole thing over at once for the final creasing. And you want these folds nice and crisp. So I've got those two sides done. I'm going to move on to the bottom. And I'm going to do the same thing again. I have that initial fold with my fingertips and then just go back in with the bone folder and smooth it out. Okay, now I'm going to move on to the top. And I like to do the first inside crease first and then do the second crease. So there I have this all nice crisply creased and ready to go. Okay I've gone ahead and folded the second one and what I want to show you now is how you create a front and a back for this envelope. It was important to me to keep the cost down for this die to only have one die. In order to do that you just have to do a slight alteration to have a front and a back. Now the front piece what we're going to do is we're going to nip off the tabs. There's two tabs at the top here and here and there's two tabs at the bottom here and here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut those off just slightly. Nip them off because we're not going to we're not going to need those the back is going to take care of that for us. And I'm cutting them at a slight angle. Just, just cut them off. Okay, so that is going to be our front piece without the tab. You're going to want to adhere this flap down to make, um, make it the back and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to run some adhesive on this flap like this and fold it on to the inside, the side without pattern. So I've got a nice clean reinforced edge here and then I'm ready to go and do my assembly. Inside of the front portion of the envelope because that way you get a nice clean edge on the front and um, it just looks a little bit more finished. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the 1 8 inch score tape around the inside tabs of the front portion of the envelope. And remember the reason why you know it's the front, it's the one that you did not fold back and adhere um, the rounded tab on. So I'm just going to run this adhesive here. Got that. Now the best thing to do is to take your time and only um, remove one piece of wax backing at a time. So I'm going to line up the score line with the edge of the back here and then I'm going to firmly press. Then I'm going to go ahead and fold in the little tabs of the back. Those will be there to reinforce the corners after it's all assembled there. So these two are folded back and we've adhered that seam right there through the center. And then next I'm going to do the back, or rather the bottom. I'm going to bring this around. I'm 
and I'm just going to fold these two together and put the sticky side out or rather in and make sure that these are lined up appropriately and press it into place with my fingers like that so the bottom is firmly in place and before I do this last piece I'm going to just fold the little tabs inward, and I actually probably could have done this a little bit earlier, but I'm going to make sure those are folded in inward. And the last step is to move this third side of adhesive. Put your little tab down at the bottom and fold this edge over. So now that I've finished my envelope, I actually want to jazz it up a little bit. There, I just, I'm a firm believer in that if you're going to spend this much time making a card, I've got a little card I made here, that you need to package it appropriately because it only takes a few extra minutes since you already have your supplies out to go ahead and decorate your envelope too. Now, here, in my opinion, now that we have the bulk mail envelope die, is the old-fashioned way to send a card. This card has bulk on it because of the buttons and the layers. And when I go and put this in a regular paper envelope, because of the bulk of it and the layers, number one, it's a little bit hard to stick in there. But number two, when I this goes through the post office, that button is going to possibly bust through the envelope. It could get caught in the machines and the car could not make it to its destination. When you put pressure on it, you know, it's so easy for that envelope to rip. I personally have received cards before that have broken through the envelope during the mailing process. And sometimes myself, when I've mailed things, I've stuck a piece, a cut a plain piece of cardstock to stick in there between the envelope and the card. But really, now that you have, can have something like this so easily, so quick and easy, color coordinate, stamped however you'd like with your project, all you have to do is open that up and stick this inside, and it's really well protected much more so than it is in a regular paper envelope. So I've got my card here and what I want to do is just take a few of the elements from the card and bring it over to the envelope. Now if you're going to adhere anything to the outside of an envelope, I highly recommend using a really strong adhesive such as score tape. Um, that way you don't take a chance of something falling off during the mailing process. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adhere this strip of pattern paper down the front of my envelope and around the flap. Take off the backing here. I'm going to put that right down the center of the envelope like that. And I've got a little bit to trim off there. Just going to flip it over and follow along. The edge of the flap there. And then I made this mailing label that is stamped pretty much the same as the butterfly on my card here. And I used the little topper from the new boutique accessories stamp set on there. It's perfect for a little envelope label. And I'm going to put some score tape all the way around this so it's affixed really, really, really well to the envelope. Put a little bit down the middle as well. A few 
peel off the backing here. And stick that on the front of the envelope. Now, on my card, I had a few leaves coming out from the sides of the butterfly, and I really, after looking at the envelope, I mean, you could obviously leave it like this, but I thought it would be a really, really, really nice finishing detail to add the little leaves to the either side of the label, and I'm going to use a little two-way glue pen for that job. And there I've just finished the last of the leaves and glued those into place. I just really like how that jazzed everything up a bit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put my card inside my envelope. And I don't know if you can see down in there, but well, I can do this. Right there shows you when this is assembled how much extra space there is. If you have an element hanging off your card, it's um, probably a little bit over a quarter of an inch, maybe even just shy of half an inch. Um, so this is a standard A2 card, four and a quarter inches wide, and as you can see, there's a full finger width right in there of where you could have ribbon hanging off the edge or a sentiment banner or what have you, and it would still fit in the envelope. So I'm going to put this in here, and to seal it up, I would highly recommend putting some score tape right there. I'm not going to do that. Um, for this video, but um, I did want to show you, I don't know if you just caught that, but I die cut some of our label paper and with the same butterfly that was on my card and I just peeled off the backing and like I said, if you were really going to mail this, I would recommend sealing the envelope with score tape, but here I'm just going to go ahead and put this butterfly on the back as a finishing accent. So there you can see just how um, cute you can make the envelope and how sturdy this mailer is and it will be so much better for sending off your beautiful creations.